Dr. Moti Adler, and I welcome you to the second episode of Moonlight Magic. In the previous episode, we saw the magic. Now, I'll explain how it's done. When Beethoven wanted to boost the dark, melancholic character of the opening of his Moonlight Sonata, he introduced a special chord that had precisely this dark, melancholic quality. However, when we examined the chord, we found out that it was a major chord. This was quite surprising and even paradoxical. As we saw, major chords are usually perceived as bright and cheerful in character. I ended the episode by saying that the explanation for this paradox lies in the surroundings or the context in which that particular major chord appeared. So, let's examine the context. The first thing we need to do in order to understand the context is to discuss the concept of musical scale. A musical scale is a series of notes around which a musical piece is organized. The first movement of the Moonlight Sonata is in a minor scale, and the piece starts with a series of minor chords that are derived from the minor scale. We will see in a minute that there is a strong connection between chords and scales. Here is an illustration of a minor scale. I present here the same minor scale twice. First it is a rising scale and then it is a falling scale. Let's listen to the two scales in succession. Can you see that the notes in the two scales are not evenly distributed? Why is that? Why aren't the notes arranged in even intervals, like this? Actually, the arrangement of the notes in the minor scale is the same as the one we see here, only with some notes missing. If you pay careful attention, you will notice that I painted these missing notes in dark red. The same color I used in the previous episode for the very dark, melancholic, magical chord. This is no coincidence. We'll see later what the connection is. Now, if I remove the red notes, we return to our original minor scale. Very well, now we know how a minor scale looks and sounds. Now let's figure out how chords are connected with the musical scales. Look at our minor scale. To make it simpler, I'll leave only the rising part. Now, in order to explain how chords are derived from musical scales, I need some more notes. That's not a problem, because musical scales are cyclical and can be extended without limits both downwards and upwards. Here, I'll extend this scale downwards by adding some notes below the lowest note. These notes are the same as the notes from the upper part of the scale, only played an octave lower. Let's listen. It's going to be the same minor scale as before. Now, we saw that chords are made of groups of three notes. I can choose any one of the notes in this minor scale as my starting note and create a chord of these notes. The procedure goes like this. First, I'll choose the note down here as my starting note. Why I chose this particular note is less important for now. Next, I'll skip two notes and choose the second note here. Then I'll skip another note and choose the third note here. Now we have a triplet of notes and let me hide the rest of the notes in the scale. Can you guess which chord this is? Of course, the color of the notes suggests that it is a minor chord. Indeed, this is the same minor broken chord we already heard. Now we can see how it is based on the minor scale. Let's listen to it.
Now, with the same procedure, I can create more chords from the minor scale. I'll choose the first note from one of the other notes of the scale, then I'll choose the second note by skipping two notes, and then I'll choose the third note by skipping one more note. If I continue with the same procedure, starting from different notes of the scale, I'll get different chords. Not all the chords will be minor chords, like the last chord we got, because the notes of the scale are not spread in even intervals. This, I remind you, is because some of the notes, the red notes, are not included in the scale. Some of the chords will be minor, like the chord we just heard. Others will, in fact, be major, and will even get a third kind of chord, which we'll discuss now. Using the same procedure we used for building the minor chord, I'll build another chord, starting from the note down here. You can see that I chose a new color for this note. This is because the chord that's based on this note will be neither minor nor major. Let's see. Here are the next two notes of the chord. Like before, I'll skip two notes and arrive here. And then I'll skip one more note and arrive here. Let's leave only this chord. Now, as I said, it doesn't have the same arrangement of notes neither of a major chord nor of a minor chord. Let's listen to this chord. In music terminology, this chord is called a diminished chord. I won't get into why this is the name of the chord. I'll return to that in another video. But I do want to emphasize again that this chord is part of the group of chords that are based on the minor scale. Because of this, and because at the beginning of the piece we heard a series of minor chords built on the same minor scale, we have a natural expectation to hear it somewhere along the way. I'll show you where the diminished chord was expected to appear in the piece. Beethoven could certainly have used the expected diminished chord, which was implied by the preceding chords. Let's listen to this version of the music, that is, to the opening phrase of the sonata with the diminished chord instead of the actual magic chord. You probably noticed that when the diminished chord arrived, I didn't change the color of the notes to orange. Instead, I kept them the same color as the minor chords. I did this to illustrate that although the chord is not minor, and although it has a different sound from a minor chord, when it arrived, we heard it in context not as an isolated diminished chord with a particular sound, but rather as part of a group or family of chords that are all built on the minor scale. Let's return to the colored picture with the highlighted orange diminished chord. In the actual piece, instead of introducing the expected chord, at this point Beethoven introduced another chord, the magic chord. The magic chord resembles the expected diminished chord with just one difference. It has one of its notes positioned lower than expected. This wrong position of the note gives the whole chord the very special dark character because of its new lower position, which comes to us unexpectedly at this point. But there is another reason why this lower position of the note creates such a dark effect. Here is the minor scale we saw earlier. I'll color the diminished chord 
the color that should have been in orange. Now, we saw that in the magic chord, Beethoven lowered the middle note one step. However, he lowered it to a position that is not part of the minor scale set of notes. Do you remember that I mentioned earlier how in a minor scale the intervals between the notes are not even because some of the notes are missing? Here, let me remind you. It turns out that the lowered note is one of these missing notes. This makes the note a stranger or a dissonant note in the minor scale. The note doesn't sound dissonant in the sense that it is unpleasant to our ears. That is because by coincidence, when we lower the middle note of a diminished chord, we get the structure of a major chord. However, the appearance of the note has a surprising effect. And because it is lower than the expected note, it boosts the dark, melancholic character of the music. Very well. Now we are all set to listen to the entire magical first movement from Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. This wonderful movement is a real mystery tour, with some beautiful twists and turns along the way. Of course, these unexpected paths along which Beethoven is leading us have their roots in our magical chord in the very beginning of the piece. Enjoy!